Hello and welcome to the .NET Core 3.0 WebSockets class. So in this class I am going to show you how to use those WebSockets on .NET Core 3.0. So what we will do, we will take a look at a very simple setup example on the back end as well as we will make an actual connection and send some message and receive a message on the front end as well. So first of all we will start with the back end and as you can see here I have a little project set up. This is a default template project uh, that is a web pages project nothing elaborate here just a simple project and in the pages file we have index file index.cshtml and on that file we will do the front end we don't really care about the looks of this we aren't learning the looks we are learning the web sockets the connection and sending the data through it so let's go now to the startup where we magic for the web so sockets happen the so startup.cs file is where you will kind of initiate the whole WebSocket thing. So you need to go to configure. You need to go to configure. Public void configure. That's usually in the bottom of, of startup.cs. And here we will start by doing something with WebSockets. We will use WebSockets. So we will say that we are using WebSockets. We do app dot use web sockets just like that now it is important to do this first you don't have to of course do this first but it's important to do it because if you forget it you won't actually get a specific error that this is not working what you will get is a response that the server that something went wrong so it will be probably 500 response. You won't see anything and you will wonder and you will look what happened wrong, what didn't happen. So it's best to just put it out where right away. Now the interesting part, we will do the actual connection setup, the sort of a listener for the connection. Now we will do app and then we will do use. Now this kind of a setup, you can find similar uses of this in many different uh, tutorials, especially that main official documentation for .NET Core. But there are some nuances here that I'm going to do. So we are, we are going to do this basic sort of Lambda expression connection. We will listen for that specific request, but we will actually declare the, the socket itself in a different class file. So let's do the lambda expression first, which is an asynchronous lambda expression. So let's do async and then let's do some parameters here. So the first one will be HTTP, let's call it, and the next one will be next. Just like that, and then the actual lambda expression starts here. 